Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU to spend 20% of budget on climate, almost 1 trillion euros. Scottish Parliament says wind farm subsidies are pushing Scots into fuel poverty. European Commission says farmers must earn part of their subsidies by protecting wildlife. Obama turns up the gas on EU-US free trade pact. Plus, Osborne and Obama, have they got it wrong? I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, this is a very interesting development. The EU, which is in an economic implosion with poverty, homelessness and violence on our streets, and yet across the Gulf of the English Channel, minds immeasurably inferior to ours have come up with the notion that in such austere times it makes sense to increase the climate budget. So what's going on here? Well, some research into the United Nations Agenda 21 will explain a lot about where the anchor points of our thought leaders are attached. Yet more news from the green sector, this time it's in relation to wind turbines. Apparently, subsidies introduced last year have cost £1 billion. These subsidies offer big benefits to energy corporations, but penalise the individual bill payer. Funny how things always seem to turn out that way. Last week it was the common fisheries policy that found itself scolded by hot scorn as Hugh Fernley Whittingstall set the Euro kleptocrats adrift without a paddle. Well, our learned scribes are probably in for some more harsh critique from the agricultural community over the latest draft of EU law from the 27 commissioners of Mordor. Apparently, EU farmers will have to demonstrate that their practices are commensurate with protecting wildlife. Bottom line, this is just an outrageous nonsense. What the Common Agricultural Policy Greening and Environmental Policy does is pay farmers not to farm the land. Furthermore, these policies have been actively used over the last 30 years to destroy small farming businesses and to develop huge agribusinesses. I know this because I used to work alongside a herd manager and saw how the Milk Marketing Board used EU legislation to change policies over milk production requirements more frequently than the herd manager could adjust the diet of the herd to compensate. Thus, what were originally incentives became penalties which destroyed profitability. Ask who lobbies the EU on agricultural policy and then you'll see that our farming is being heavily manipulated by global corporate agribusinesses. Well, it's high in the news stream, but are we really asking the right questions? President Obama pushed hard on his drive for the development of a US-EU economic trading community. But why now? Surely the US and EU appear to have similar economic difficulties and face growing problems in the same vein. So how might uniting these two Western economies bring benefits? Further to the point, has the media not spotted that it's got one foot in the trough and one foot in its mouth? Half the stories purport that open, free trade with the EU is out of reach for the UK and so we must follow the will of the Federation if we are to continue to have access to the single European market. The other half of the stories tell of free trading between the EU and the US and the EU and Africa. Well, either I'm confused or the Euro Bureau Collective have lost control of their propaganda machine. This article takes a look at the thought processes and political rhetoric taking place on both sides of the Atlantic. As government wrestle with prolonged economic depression, which some would argue is a collapse, can state-funded welfare continue to sustain service levels to a growing and ageing population? Is continued austerity and increasing the tax burden the right policy? This article investigates. Today in our video library, well, in light of the green and environmental policy that's appeared on the horizon in today's nightly news, we have delayed Eric's analysis until tomorrow night. Now, today's video is going to strike you like something from an Orwellian novel. I'm not going to say whether this is true in full, in part or complete fiction, 
but I can tell you that Agenda 21 exists and is a program for environmental sustainability. I can tell you that if you want to take a view on the drivers behind environmental policy, then you need to know about Agenda 21. In our video library today, I have two videos for you. One, Agenda 21 for Dummies, links below, and two, Behind the Green Mask by Rosa Corey, links also below. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis, for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.